Hey, how you doing? Justin here. It is Tammy's sixth guitar lesson with me today. How are you, Tammy? I'm okay, thank you. You had a good week? Yes. What discoveries did you make this week? Um, so I've been a bit of a theory slacker. Right. These two weeks. But I have made some fun discoveries. Like okay. Experimenting with some of the shapes and chord variations cool. and stuff. I saw a major scale chart there, though. So. Oh, yeah. I've, I've obviously doing, I've been doing the scale pattern. Yeah, and okay. What I was doing with, so you were showing me those Damien Rice open yeah. string Gordon's, E shape yes. variations. Um, and I was hearing something in my head and I couldn't figure out what chord came next. So I figured out what the two chords I was playing were. Yeah. And then I looked at, okay. the, mate, at the scale yeah. and saw what else was in it and found one that fitted. Cool. So. That's a great use of that major scale chart for anyone who's a little bit confuddled out there that's watching. So the idea of there being set chords in the key. You don't have to stick with them. Mm. Sometimes chords that are not in the key sound great, so you yeah. don't always have to use it. But in that particular case where you're looking to try and find the chords that would fit with that, that's a great use of that scale. So that's, yeah, good discovery there. Um, you said you hadn't been very good on it other than that, though, so you didn't get much further along? No, probably no? not further <laughs> okay. along, but just trying to uh, understand more. No, no, you've, you, you did a lot really to. quickly, so yeah. probably it might need a little time to consolidate, and that's, mm -hmm. that's totally fine. Uh, the major scale then, you said you'd done some practice on the major scale, mm -hmm. how's that feeling and going? Um, I feel, like I, I, I was trying to figure out ways, and I think planting my thumb helps me to not kind of like shift myself yeah, okay. around so much, Good. and I'm still missing strings every now and again, or hitting the wrong string, but... That's to be expected yeah, a little. It so feels the better. idea with this sort of thing is like, we didn't really talk last week about much of the technique, the... the, the detail of how you should be doing it i just wanted you to get used to the shape and being yeah. able to play it probably this week we should talk just a little bit about the technique potentially do that finger stretching exercise that i think i mentioned last time because yeah. it's just really good even if you don't want to do complicated stuff the more flexible your fingers are the easier you'll get to your chord shapes and stuff yeah so uh just so, where did you get to with the scale just play it for me up and down once and it's pressure time now yeah <laughs> what note are we going to start on Okay, so we, we try and always start and finish on the root note. Okay, so, so that if you start on this one, you can kind of hear like the re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Whereas mm. if you start on this one, yeah. you're kind of hearing this sound. Yeah. Okay. Which isn't the same as the re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Okay. Yeah? So generally speaking, you want to start on the lowest root note that you've got in any scale or arpeggio or anything you learn. Mm -hmm. Play up as far as you can in the, in the within that area of the neck, as low as you can, so you'd go back to that note, but then you'd finish again on this one. So okay. you start here, up as far as you can, all the way back down again, as low as you can go, and then come back and finish on it. So you're really hearing that sound yeah. right up you don't double the top note all the way down yeah this okay. becomes more important when we go further up the neck and that's the lowest root note and you go all of the way up all the way down and then back to that root note so you can really hear that okay. the sound of the harmony that you're outlining yep. make sense yeah so let's try that again so starting from there good I'm getting myself confused. That's right. Second. That's it. Mm -mm. Oh. Oh. Ah, wrong string. You just forgot to change strings. Yeah. That's it. Good. Do, do, boom. That's it. Okay. Really good. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, I want you to try it once more now. And I want you to be aware of a couple of parts to this. Okay. One of them is a more advanced exercise that I'm going to tell you about. I'm not expecting you to do it really well straight away, but I just want you to be aware that that's the goal. It'll help you get to the right place sooner. The fingers generally shouldn't lift very far off the fretboard at all. When you watch me play uh, the other week, you went, oh, it looks so easy. It's because mm. my hand's not moving any more than it needs to. So yeah. if you just watch, I just do the same scale again. 
you're kind of doing, and I'm exaggerating, but you're kind of doing like this. With the fingers, they're all kind of, you know, yeah. but as well, you're doing motion that way a bit. And you really want, do you see that they're not really, none of the fingers are coming more than like a centimeter off the fretboard or something, yeah? Yeah. You're not gonna be able to do that right away, but that's the kind of level of control you wanna develop. Mm. So, at the moment, you're moving a little bit this way. And that's not something we want. We, that means that your stretch isn't working well enough for you. Okay. okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go and do an exercise I call the finger stretching exercise. It should hurt a little bit, right? It should feel a little bit stretchy, yeah? yeah. And then we're going to come back and play the scale again. Hopefully, just even spending five minutes on this exercise will help. So okay. starting on the eighth fret, first finger, that's it. And you're going to play one, two, three, four, real slow. And just think about it in relation to doing stretching like doing an exercise. You don't try and force yourself into it where it hurts. You want to do it nice and slowly and really make it feel stretchy. So here first, that's it. Now second finger, no. Now leave oh, okay. that one down because that's what's going to give you the stretch. Now second finger, good. Third finger, little finger. That's it, good. Now just do it. leave it there for a second. Just let that settle in a bit. So does it feel pretty tight around here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, try and keep that shoulder relaxed. That's it. Stretching you know is all about relaxing, right? Yeah. Okay, same thing on the next string down. Trying to keep the fingers nice and square the way you had it. Don't let the fingers go at an angle. That's it. Right. We're there. Good. One, two. Leave one and two down. Three. That's it. Four. Good. That's it. Next string. Keeping the fingers nice and square still. That's good. That's it, okay, one more, next down. That's it, good, really good position now. Can you see the way these two kind of group together and these two flay out a bit? That's mm -hmm. totally fine, that's how our fingers work when they go into the palm like that. They all kind of pointing toward this central thing. So these two, two do tend to join together and these two go outwards, okay. that's fine. Okay, next string. Keep them mm -hmm. down, that's it. Good, and a thinner string. Just relax your shoulder, relax it, relax. That's it, just relax, that's what we want. Okay, relax a bit more here. You're really tense in the, okay, it looks, no, here, relax, that's it. It doesn't want to be bent, but it doesn't, it shouldn't be, I can feel in your forearms are really <laughs> tense, right? Now, same thing again, mm -hmm. except little finger is gonna go up a fret. Okay. So, starting here, first, second, third little finger that. yeah that's it you can do it good you've done it next string keep them down that's it little finger that's it good now try and keep your i know it's hard but try and keep your whole arm and shoulder everything else relaxed next string down up up that's it good next string That's it. Good. That's it. Now, just freeze for a second. Can you see that they've all gone at an angle now? Yeah. I want you to try and keep that nice... That's it. Now it'll feel much more stretchy when you... That's it. That's good. That's a good position. So it feels stretchy? Mm, good. Yeah. And that same thing. Try and keep that nice shape on the thinner string. That's it. Excellent. Okay, back to the starting position at the eighth fret. That's it. Now these fingers are going to stay where they were, but first finger is going to drop back. So we're going to have first finger, yep. a fret gap, yep. and then second finger is going to go over here. That's it. <laughs> you do it. There we go. That's it. Keep the rest there. That's it. Good. I feel like my bones are stretching. Go. Okay, yeah. That's it. Good. Next string down. <laughs> Try and keep it. That's it. That's better. Better, better. You should be playing it, but that's okay. Good. Next string down. That's it. Stretch it out. That's <laughs> it. Good. 
Oh, I'm not playing it. Don't so. worry. Mm. It doesn't really matter, but it's better to play. That, okay. Now just freeze there for a second. Try and relax the hand, relax the shoulder, relax the elbow. Here, just a bit more relaxed. That's it. Just try, I know, I know, just relax it, have a rest, let your hand, yeah? You can feel it stretching oh, like, all you through can, your hand. You totally can, yeah? yeah? You don't want to overdo this one. This is one of those ones that can be, can kind of get nasty if you, if you overdid it, if you did 15 minutes of this a day, every day, you're going to really just end up sore. Yeah. This is like maximum five minutes a day. Yeah. It's a good one to do either at the beginning or at the end, right? Not both, <laughs> for yeah. sure. And if it hurts... If it hurts, you got to stop. I can hear a phone going. Is that my phone or your phone? No, doesn't matter. Mine Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, if it hurts, stop straight away. Okay, just leave it for the day. Give it a rest for the following day. Okay, okay. so it should be sore, like doing a gym stretch where you're like really trying to push it. It's like, oh god, this is uncomfortable, but it shouldn't yeah. be painful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all I want you to do for this one. Is so start with just doing the the four just in one fret around the eighth fret because you can imagine as we go further down the neck the frets get further and further yeah. apart so eventually you want to be doing like one two three four six <laughs> that's like my absolute limit my little finger won't even go there but for you just starting like that at the eighth fret it's not a speed thing okay it's not a speed thing you're much better off doing it like really slowly or even slower than that little finger first all of the way down yeah if you've got time, go this way as well. So going back, you know, physically up. Okay. Same pattern. Little finger forward first, then uh, first finger back one fret. Try. It. Can you see the way that they all keep? The yeah. hand is keeping its shape, it shape all the, the time. Yeah. You are going to have to do this. You've already been doing it a little bit, but I'll just show you what you're doing so that you know it's okay. Instead of being able to reach out like that, straight away yeah. you were reaching out sideways at an angle step, then yeah. realizing oh shit third finger's got to go down and then to get <laughs> that down then you were going like this and that's fine because you're helping develop that stretch everyone has to do that okay. you know it's unlikely you're going to be able to go oh second finger over there and just move it they won't be yeah. developed yet yeah. so doing this like sideways stretch and then go Oy, is okay it's not <laughs> okay. ideal okay. it's not what we're aiming for but as a starting point it's going to be fine okay yeah now, uh, this is a good one to use a timer for. So just stick your iPhone on five minutes, start, and then after, at the end of five minutes, don't keep going. Even if you haven't finished, it doesn't matter. Okay. Right? Yeah. Have a go at playing the scale again for me now. I'm just going to give you a different pick because using the super thin pick isn't very good. I just want you to use all down picks with the pick. I haven't been doing it with the pick. It doesn't matter. You're going to do it now. There we go. Good. Try and keep the hand in position, that's better. Uh -uh. That's it. Picking the wrong string, oh. doesn't matter, that's, that's it. That's it. Do it. Well done. The first half of that was much better than and the then last I time. Start, I and then it started wobbling. Started yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that this is that idea of when you've worked on the stretch and your hand feels more able to get to those notes, you'll find playing the scale up and down a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, really important that you get to memory, which you've done. Also useful to be aware of that you don't always have to play with the same fingers as an exercise now you do mm -hmm. but when it comes to actually using it you don't okay yeah yeah so <laughs> hey told you we get you doing this so the reason is i want you to have a little uh, experiment with the idea of uh soloing this is so Okay. Yeah, no, I'm sure it feels weird. <laughs> I yeah. think it's so skinny. Huh? It's, so, it's all skinny and there's nothing. Yeah. So just lean it up on yourself, arm forward. I find with electric guitar that having a long jumper on means that I can't grip the guitar properly. So okay. if you can and it's not too tight, just shove it. Yeah, that, yeah. Now, does it feel a bit more grippy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Be It'll feel a bit awkward because I've just literally, Tammy's not played electric guitar before, so I've, I've thrown it on. Here we go. So 
we're going to just use the middle two strings of that scale pattern. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, let's turn your volume right up. There we go. So it was going to be second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret. Just play it. So, yeah. That's it. Just those notes. Okay. And I'm just going to play some chords. And you, I want you to just experiment and play some notes and see if you can figure, well, these ones sound good. Some of them are going to sound better than others on particular chords, but they'll all sound good. There's no bad notes, there's just some better than other ones. Just playing yeah? those single... Just whatever, and just, it doesn't have to be like... I'm not actually just like go... But play just the like scale, try and like, pick. So just like try and pick. Whatever, just, I just want you to have a bit of fun with it and experiment. Because <laughs> this is where, you know, if you're going to get into electric guitar as well and have one, this is a really cool part of it where you could record your acoustic guitar playing some strumming and then make up a little riff or a little solo or a melody or whatever you want to call it. Okay. I think it's a really fun diversion. Yeah? Yeah. Three, four. <laughs> Don't worry. Barely strumming, string, it. No, no. <laughs> barely strumming it because I'm like yeah. now I feel I'm feeling bad now because you're uh, as well as not playing electric guitar before you're not playing this scale with a pick before no so I'm going to give you two uh, things to try one play the electric guitar without a pick so just pop the pick down and have a go at playing that same six notes mm -hmm. but not having to use a pick okay. yeah so just use your thumb uh, the the key one of the key kind of things is just to listen to the what I'm playing and what you're playing together rather than just thinking about what you're playing mm -hmm. because what somebody who's listening hears mm. is the mixture of the two things okay so that's it's part of learning to do this is expanding your awareness beyond just yourself because we all do that when we're playing we want to concentrate on what we're doing and the notes sounding good and the you know all of that stuff but really what listeners hear is what everyone in the band is doing yeah and it can be a good thing even if you were a singer songwriter and only play acoustic guitar and singing yeah if you've trained your awareness to be bigger than that you can interact with other people in the band you'll understand the dynamic of the listener and yeah. what they're hearing make sense yeah okay same thing again here we go three four <laughs> <laughs> Do you notice how some of the notes are like, oh, this one sounds a bit funny. Yeah. It's not like a bad note. Yeah. It's just not the right one. You can, you can sense that already. So the fact that you can hear it is the biggest step. Some people have trouble recognizing it. You're hearing it straight away. The first step is learning to recognize, well, this was a funny note, and just step either side and you're going to be on a good note. Now, I don't think you've reached it in the theory course, but you're going to learn chords are made up of like a first degree third degree and a fifth degree of a scale mm -hmm. potentially the seventh as well so one three five seven 
they're the ones that are going to sound good. The ones in between, the yeah. two and the four and the six, are going to be the ones that are a little bit Don't weird. To think about it and to know the theory and do it sucks. Yeah. There's no point in doing that. Yeah. But if you understand that that's why they sound a bit weird, just think one step up the scale or one step down the scale and you can end up on the perfect one. If you're on two, you go backwards to one or forward to three, you're on the perfect note. Mm -hmm. If you're on four, you go backwards to three, up to five, you're right again. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you're practicing this, because one of the things I want you to do now is going to be two parts to this. One. I want you to write and record some chord progressions in the key of G. Mm -hmm. So just put on a, a click track or a drum groove or whatever you've got that you can record to. Yeah. Record yourself playing any chords in the key of G in any order. Yeah. Maybe write a song, whatever you like. Then I want you to improvise over that chord progression using the G major scale. Okay. What I just did was restrict you to two strings. The good thing about that is it means that you're thinking about listening to the notes that you're doing because there are good notes in those six notes that you can use. Yeah. As soon as you get the whole thing, you're going to start playing down on the thick strings, which generally sounds muddy in a solo. Mm -hmm. It's good for practicing the scale up and down, but yeah. in the real world, you don't tend to use those thick strings as much. It gives you a lot less to think about, to worry about bad notes because you know the pattern's pretty simple. But if you exhaust that within a week or two weeks and you want to start playing on the thinnest two strings, that's okay too. But start okay. with just those middle two just strings. The middle ones. Yeah? So this is going to be a five minute improv. I'm going to send you a link to a backing track as well. Um, if you want to have a muck around with playing to the backing track, it's a good. Mm -hmm. I've got a backing track that I kind of designed for people to learn to improvise on. So it keeps the harmony nice and simple. And it's, yeah. You'll find that you can hear where it's going. And you can kind of go like, oh, the next chord's going to be here. I think this is going to be the good note to play. It's kind of knowing what that note is going to sound like when you play it as well, mm -hmm. in the sense that I could, I was listening to what you were playing. I could hear what I wanted to play, yes. but I wasn't really sure. Yeah, yeah. You've only just only learned it. You knew. People spend their whole lifetimes learning to be able to hear what a note's going to sound like before they play it. Right? Yeah. So don't be upset yeah. that you can't do that yet. But that would be the long-term goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'll see if I can't lend you an electric guitar as well to have a bit of a go on that because it's just, it's a different thing. You don't, I'm not trying to force you onto doing electric guitar, but it's a nice, with where you're at, I think it's a cool thing to be mixing it up, your the practice between strumming and, and learning chords and all that sort of stuff and exploring yeah. this a little bit. It's just yeah. a nice, creative, fun vehicle and you'll find that you can do all of those singer songwritery things on electric guitar as well as acoustic and they just yeah. got a bit more of a you know, kind of a grungy, earthy kind of feel, which I think can be kind of just as cool as acoustic guitar. Yeah. Make sense? Definitely. Okay, I'll give you this one back for now. There we go. So there you go. You're no longer an electric guitar virgin anymore. You've done that. There's a pick. Uh, and remind me to give you some thicker picks. Okay, so... I've got that one thicker one you gave me. Which one? The, an orange, orange one? one? Okay, orange is great. Just the white ones for scales are really not... They're yeah. too flippy floppy and okay. you can't control them properly. Okay, orange one for scales. So, uh, what else? What was the next on my to-do list? Okay, we've covered the... So, this week your major scale stuff will be... Excuse me. You've got a, a bit of stuff to do, actually. You're going to have five minutes on the finger stretch. Yeah. Five minutes on playing the scale up and down, but now with a pick. Yeah. Making sure you use a pick, just all down picks. Don't worry about alternate picking yet, just all down picks. Okay. And then five minutes on improvising. So I'll give you a backing track that you can use initially. Yeah. But then part of what we'll do now is doing these chord progressions and playing along, and then you can record yourself and then jam along with yourself, which is a really good thing to do. Okay. Sorry, my post-it note just fell off my little computer screen over there. Made me jump. Anyway, uh, so the next thing, which I need on that post-it note, was going to be, oh yeah, the E shape. Uh, chords. Mm -hmm. How did you find them? Fun? Yeah, fun. It's cool. What was the, the, the sequence that you said you found a little thing and then you needed to know what the other chords were? Yeah, so I like, um, this is where I've probably got it wrong, but it's just a B. Yeah. yeah so I like, I like that song. And then go into A. Yeah. And then I could hear quite like a low note next mm -hmm. and I couldn't find it on the shape so then I just went to... Yeah, then, we're in the yeah. key of E and it's great. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's a really, I mean, that's a, a five, four, one progression you need. It's really good. It's the, uh, that Damien Rice song that we talked about, which now I can't the remember. The Blower's Daughter uses those chords and a few others. Yeah. Um, the next step along, which I think you'll find really interesting, is to try other chords 
with the same idea and not to be afraid of that, especially mm -hmm. as a writing creative creative person. Yeah. You want to be just trying stuff and not be afraid to go, well, what if I do this? Because mm. the worst that can happen is you go, that sounded a bit bad. I'll do it. I won't do that again or I'll try altering it in some way. Yeah. Things like a C chord. If you move it up one fret, it just sounds a little bit like mm. a horror film. Up another one. That's an interesting. Up another one. Not really happening. Not really happening. I quite like that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds a little bit crunchy, but it's still possible. Horrible. That's nice. Not really. Oh, interesting. Yeah. D chord. Great. Mm, maybe not. Interesting. Interesting. Maybe not. Great. Maybe not. That's pretty cool as well. There's loads of songs that use these kind of... You can get that you can just get away with any almost anything like that. Yeah. A minor chord. It's just exploring the shapes. Yeah. So we already looked at shape explorer in open position, which we'll talk about in a sec, which was yeah. just like lifting fingers off, trying out different stuff. Mm -hmm. But you can also take the traditional shapes and then move them move around them. and use Shape Explorer on those shapes and see what happens to lift off different fingers and just try Without new actually things. Making them. Because in my mind, if you're moving down the frets, you need to turn it into a bar chord. In mm. my head, that's what... No, no, that's, kind of and, and that is the normal, traditional way to mm. play. What I'm showing you is the, the alternate route, which is not really caring about what the chord's name is, what the harmony is. Uh, whether you should play it or whether you shouldn't or whether it's yeah. in the key it's kind of irrelevant if you're just making music and you're writing songs yeah you want sometimes the things that are a little bit um there's this band called gomez do you remember gomez mm, they were a pretty okay. hipster band 10 years ago or whatever and they had this <laughs> That chord, it's like, I would never have played that chord, ever. It's weird, but in that context of... It's just, it's kind of cool and quirky. Yeah. And yeah. that was one of those little lessons for me where I was like, this is a great record, I really like it. It's, in, you know, really popular. But it's using this stuff that just doesn't make any Shouldn't sense to work. me. Harmonically, yeah. like, you can't do that. But you can. Mm. Yeah? So on your creative time, I want you to spend some time mucking around with chords and seeing what you can come up with because it doesn't take much. And if you're writing a tune, you don't need loads of really quirky ideas. You might just have one. One yeah. interesting chord that's in the wrong place that makes your thing stand out from all of the other tunes that you've heard. Because mm. we don't really need many more songs that go E minor, G, C and D. Yeah. There's like rather a lot in the universe now. I found it amazing with the Shape Explorer how you could just have like two shapes, but by lifting fingers on and off, it sounds like you're playing like five or six. Yeah, absolutely. Chords, whereas you're actually just playing two. But that's where a lot of those, you know, I use that Sheryl Crow song that If It Makes You Happy is a good example on the G one, because it is just a simple variation of a G chord, mm. but it's, a riff, it's a theme, and I'm, I'd be very surprised if that wasn't the starting point for that tune. It might might have been that they'd, she'd already written the song and then that just became by a session player later, but it wouldn't surprise me if she'd come up with a riff and it kind of grew yeah. from there. Yeah. You know. And lots of songs definitely grow from a little guitar idea because they can grow from anything. They can grow from a lyric, they can grow from a chord, riff, whatever. Yeah. Yeah? So five minutes on exploring chord shapes, using the wrong shapes on the wrong strings or the wrong part of the neck or whatever, and just seeing if you can come up with some funky chords. Okay. When you find the funky ones, write them down. Okay. Right? Yep. So it's really important. If you don't write chords down, you'll forget them. You might go, it's like lyric ideas or song ideas that you have in the night. 
if you don't get up and write it down, mm -hmm. you won't remember it. Yeah. You just, you don't. I don't know why it doesn't work like that, but you have to write things down. Okay. You find it, write it down. You know how to write a chord box or you can download paper from my site or whatever and print yep. it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, any questions on that and exploring the chords thing? Um, I don't think so. No? No. Okay. No. Good. Capo. Yeah. We're on it. Okay. So, we discussed already loosely the idea that capos have a double function. Yeah. And that part one is the one that you're using already, which is taking a chord progression or a song that you can't sing in the key where it is. So, you use the capo to lift it up, excuse me, to whatever uh, register you need it to be able yeah. to sing. Yeah. You will have noticed on Chord Explorer that there's sometimes some chords have got quirks about them that you like more than others. Mm. I very rarely like using an E chord. Mm -hmm. There's just not variations under my fingers that I feel are nice. That just doesn't yeah. feel right. So I would almost certainly use a capo any time I've written a song that's got an E chord to get away from the E chord. Still play the same harmony, yeah. same chord progressions, but find other ways of playing it. Yeah. Quite often you'll need to use bar chords interspersed with that, but just remember that if you're playing a bar chord in front of the capo, the bar chord is what it is. The capo, it doesn't make any difference. If you give me an A bar chord, you oh, God. remember how to do A bar chord? That's an A shaped bar chord. Uh, we want an A chord using whatever shape you like. Uh, mm. Yeah, good. Okay. Give it a strum. Damien Rice way or normal way? Normal way. <laughs> okay. Strum it again. Strum it again. Does that make any difference? Right? No, because you're the higher Exactly, bar. because your bar is going to be higher than the capo. Yeah. Right? The capo works for the open chords only. Yeah? So, if your first chord was an open G chord, mm -hmm and you wanted to find another way of playing that chord, what's the first option that we could find? Where could we put a capo and use a different shape to be able to still get a G chord? Good, so that's an E shape. So we can just plonk the old capo down and play an E chord and we got it. You can use regular fingers, you don't even need to use those. That's it. What's the next one? What's, what's the next shape along? And what's it to do with? Just remind the viewers what it is that you're doing to find the shapes. What's it called? The, the, cage what's it? the cage system. So we went, we had a G, C, A, G, E, e. cage, D. We had a D, that's, that, you were nearly there, which is a pig of a chord, no one ever plays it, but it should be obvious now that if you just lift off your first finger, pop that down and play a D chord normally, that's it. Still a G chord, so I'm still, we're still playing a G. Mm -hmm. Where would the next one be? And what shape is it? See. Look at you! Wow, well done. I've put the cap on the wrong fret, evidently. Yeah, I've put the cap on the wrong fret. My bad. There we go, I'm like, <laughs> she's definitely done it right. Okay, and the last one would be uh, what? A. Yeah, which would be where? Mm, yeah, this. so where'd the cap go? There. Good. So, this is the first step, but usually songs have more than one chord, right? Yeah. So how on earth do you figure out what the other ones are? Using the system somehow. Yeah, okay. We'll, f we'll figure it out. So let's say your chord progression went G to C. Mm -hmm. If I do, we said that we can put the capo there on the third fret. How would we play the G chord? So that was the... Uh, uh, almost. That's better. Yeah. So that's a G chord. What if we wanted to play a C chord using the same thing? So think back to where your C chord was. That's it. Mm -hmm. What would be the next shape up? Excellent. Give it a strum. So I can play G to C and you can play. Mm. Give it a strum. Three, four. See how nice it sounds together straight away. Yeah. Yeah. 
Not only is it good for the chord shapes like learning to experiment with what variations you might like to do, but when you've got two guitar parts playing, mm -hmm. it gets super cool. What was the next G chord? Uh, so it's E, yeah. D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Down. Almost. <laughs> That's it. Okay. So capo there and the D chord. That's it. So if we wanted to do a C chord, there, there's our G, we wanted to do a C chord, how might we do that? Now there's, a, there's two ways, there's an easy way and a hard way here. Where's the root note for a C chord? Yeah, right? So that's a G chord, but that's a, the note C. We mm -hmm. know that's the root note of our G chord, so it's the root note of the C chord too. Okay. So in this shape, you could go D to G. Again, three, four. How nice does that sound? That yeah. That's just far enough away where we're not playing the same notes at all and it becomes a real nice blend. Okay. Yeah? yeah? Do you see how each time we move the capo there's another approach to it? We can either do the idea of following up our chords from C shape to A shape to G shape to E shape to D shape or we can start to look there and go, well I, I, I had this G chord like this, sorry I haven't got my capos up there. If I wanted a, G, a C chord, I'm like, well there's a C note. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. If we had another chord, and I'm going to make it deliberately wacky, how, how shall I, what wacky shall I make it? An A chord, right? So the chord progression went C, G, C to A. Mm -hmm. Pretty weird chord progression. When we had it at the third fret, yeah? So we had an E chord that we could use for the G. Yeah. That's it, E shape which is the G chord, give it a strum. We had an A chord that we could use, which was a C chord, but now we need an A chord, an A major chord. So A chord was down here. Yeah. If we look at the cage system, C, A, we'd have a G shape. Yeah. But that would be here, Yeah. which isn't right because the bar would need to be here. So what can we do to play the A chord? How do we get, a, get around that chord that we can't use as an open chord? What did we start off with before we put the capo on and we started looking at the chords? What exercise did we do? Shifting. Yeah, playing the bar chords. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you can just play an A chord. Right here, that was an A chord, wasn't okay. it? Fifth fret? Yep. No, A chord, bar, bar chord, this one. Oh, well, play it like yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, no, with, with the whole thing. Yeah, there's your A chord, that's an A chord. Whether this is on or not, that's an okay. A chord. Yeah, so I, you could go here G, mm -hmm. C, to A. When you put the capo on, you played it with an E shape, mm -hmm. an A shape, but there's no way of playing that A chord with that root note any other way other than playing it with a bar chord. With a bar chord, okay. Do you yeah. see what I mean? So I that's yeah. where, once you know what the chords are, it can be really helpful to write them down. Yeah. When you're exploring the capo thing, you just remember if there's no chord that I can use in the open shape, of which there will often be, mm -hmm. you use a bar chord. Okay. And bar chords are just the same regardless of whether there's a capo involved or not. Yeah? Yeah, it makes sense. So I want you to pick two songs. They can either be original chord progressions or an actual song. Mm -hmm. And I want you to find at least three ways of playing them with a capo, like three different capo positions for each tune. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. And hopefully you'll pick songs where you have to use some bar chords and some capo positions. Okay. Are you clear on this now? You yeah, might, I get it, it. and it would be totally all right for you to come back next week and go, look, I got home and this, I just, I can't, I don't get it. No, it but, makes sense. Yeah, no, I do get it. Yeah? So if you can't follow the cage system, then you just have to do the bar. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah? Cool. So this is the, the whole idea with the capo, the creative capo, is I think I actually I've got a lesson on the site. It's called Creative Capo, so mm -hmm. you might want to check that if you get okay. lost or want some more ideas. But it's about this, the mixture of the shape explorer and this, where you can go, I don't like these chord grips because I like these ones better, so I'm going to transpose my song. And then after you find those new chord shapes, then you might move the capo up and down with those shapes to fit your voice. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. It could be both of those things. You could use the capo to change the key of your voice and get the chord shapes that you like okay. at the same time. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah? Yep. 
Great. Uh, backbeat check. Oh man. How'd you go with that? I just want to hit. I just. I tend to just want to like tap it rather than play it. Yeah. So like the first few times I do it, I'll get it, and then as soon as I start kind of getting into it, I for some reason naturally just tap it rather than play it. Show me. And I always leave the top string out as well. It's, a, it's all right. Just keep going. I just, I'm just trying to see exactly where you are with the technique and how we can fix it. The tempo feels very lazy. Like, <laughs> you know? Try it. Maybe have a go at doing... Uh, give me a D chord. Mm-hmm. And give me the da 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 whatever it's called, the credence thing. Da 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 Okay, that's it. Try not to th strum those thicker two strings, if you can. That's it. Are you aware that you're really shuffling? Do you know what I mean by shuffling? No. So, when we have the beat, four beats in a bar, if we divide each one of those beats in half, we have eight notes, mm -hmm. which we normally count as and. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. If you're going to do, if when you're strumming normally, if I do it mathematically spot on, it'd be one, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. Yeah. Yeah? If I move those ands a little bit later than they should be, you end up with this one and two and three and four and. But it's yeah. different, doesn't it? This is different to yeah. one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Yeah. Yeah? Having a shuffle is a real common thing in a blues thing or country things where you have like. all of yeah. those sort of things but in pop music it's generally straighter yeah you should be able to do both yeah yeah so you need to be aware if you're doing a shuffle rhythm yeah and there's nothing wrong with it it's a cool thing yeah but again for this one on something like the the credence you sort of it's not that if i that's not right you hear how different it is? Yeah. Okay. Just try it again. Okay. So we're not using any of that part of the hand resting on the strings in order to get the click. That's why you're wanting to hit. Okay. Yeah. So the thing to practice at the moment, because you've got a chord on, it's easier to forgive yourself because the notes are going to sound fine mm. the best practice is definitely do it without any hands on the like you just hold it or whatever but to to get a nice can you see how it's all about that that hand touchy on there if i don't do that i can go like this yeah but it's a different i think that's what the habit has got me into doing. Yeah, yeah yeah so just try it again that's it Good. Practicing it like this without the fingers on will force you to get it right. It doesn't let you make any mistakes. It becomes really obvious. Keep going. Good. Hand looks quite tense. Can you relax it a little? Keep the same thing. That's it. That's it. Got it. I know sometimes there's notes ringing out and I'm saying you're doing it right it's because the motion is right and it means that you'll get there. Yeah, so I, the, like I need a bigger hand. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> I know what you're feeling, but it's, it's like me trying to play John Mayer songs. The, the, uh, but the idea is just trying to keep that nice and relaxed so you can get a nice click on then. 
Yes, it's really all about that down first and then the feet comes behind. It feels when you're learning like two motions, yeah. but after a while it just becomes one. Because this only has to touch like, you know, a nanosecond before that comes down. See it again? See it? Try and keep the art, keep it feeling like a downstroke. Look, it's not, I'm not doing it like this. You've got to feel like a downstroke. That's it, good. Good. Not so much this. That's it. Now with the chord, give me a strumming pattern. Down, up, down, down, up, click. Down, up, click. Down, down, up, click. Up, down, up, click. It. It's get it's actually better. I know it doesn't you're probably not feeling like it is, but the that no, that was it toward the end, you got it. Yeah. This is worth persevering with. Yeah. It's one of those yeah. ones where most people who learn it find it pretty tricky. Yeah. It's a clicker though. So you're gonna find either this week or next, if you can spend this would be a really good five minute or I know again five minutes on just this is gonna feel a long time, but yeah. it'll be well worth it. Yeah. And within a week or two weeks, you'll find that it's either clicking all the time or you've experienced it clicking. And yeah. what I mean by experience is just going like, oh, I got it. It sounds great and it's working yeah. for me. And then you might try and come back to it and it doesn't work straight away. But at least if you've had the experience of it working, you know what it feels like and you know yeah. you're capable of it. Yeah. That means that you'll and get what, it again. what I soon. did that time to do it. Exactly. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that all makes sense. Mm -hmm. So... I think that's going to be the thing. So I've got the new interface set up, but I'm not ready to start recording with it yet because I was waiting for some cables, which just showed up this afternoon. So Amazing. hopefully next lesson we'll actually have a go at recording a tune, or okay. starting to record a tune at least. Um, at least that's on the agenda. So uh, any other questions or discoveries that you'd like to share? No. No? no? It's all good? I've gone through all the discoveries, yep. Cool. Well... That's your homework. I'll, as usual, I'll type it up for you. What following along at home. There'll be links to the various lessons that we've talked about. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Say bye-bye to the internet, Tammy. Bye. And just down there where the, where the little screen is, that's not where they're seeing you. They're seeing oh. you there. So if you want to say bye-bye, you want to look at that big one over there. Hello. <laughs> because then, otherwise it's like they're saying hello to me. They're talking like, just looking down you around. know, when people look at a different place where they're talking to you. Yeah, it's like that. Anyway, have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.